I've never asked Mackenzie why he became a physio, but, but I've got to. I've got to ask him. And people often say, why did I become a physiotherapist? Because I didn't really know much about it. When I was at college, I was in the professional class, and I was taking chemistry, maths, physics, all the subjects that you would take in a, in a professional class. And when I left college... I thought I'd like to do a degree in science. So I joined Imperial Chemical Industries and they had their offices on the terrace in Wellington. And when I went along to see them, they didn't. They said to me, look, we, you can go into our laboratory if you like and, and work there, but at the moment we'd like you to work in, in our office and, and we'd just like to see how you get on. And I remember I was working in the office of Imperial Chemical Industries. And of course, the school year in New Zealand would finish in December, and March was the university year, so I went and asked the secretary of the company if I could have approval to attend lectures up at university. I wanted to take a science degree. And he said to me, and he called me Mr Mulligan, because in those days everyone was Mr Mulligan, and you were sir, and you were madam. And he said, Mr Mulligan, he said, um, I know you would like to do a science degree, but everybody in this company top down, in, anyone who's anyone in this country has a degree in accounting. And I would suggest that you did accounting. And I was an impressionable young man. So I went up to university and I took bookkeeping, company law and merc law. And at the end of the year I thought, and I was sitting in office, I don't want to do this. I wanted to be in a science lab or something, not sitting at a desk pushing a pen. This is, this is not for me. And at the end of that first year, I had to ring up a company in Wellington about some containers that were missing. And the guy that spoke to me said, Mulligan, he used my name three times. And I said, who are you? He said, Bill Bate. And Bill Bate used to live about 200 metres from where I lived as a boy. And it was his last day with this company. And I said, what are you going to do, Bill? He said, there's a new career out there called physiotherapy. And he said, I'm going down to Dunedin to do physiotherapy. I said, well, tell me more about it. So he told me as much as he could there and then, and then told me that I should go and see a couple of returned servicemen who had done physio, and they were in practice in Wellington, and that if I spoke to them, I might be interested in doing physiotherapy too. And in fact, that's what I did. And I couldn't believe what they were telling me, that this was the new career of the future. And one even mentioned manipulation years ago. His name was Ollie Olsen. He said, you know, we're going to be manipulating and doing all sorts of exciting things in the future. And I thought, my God. So I came home, discussed with my parents, um, you know, that I, I would like to try this. And uh, I made some inquiries. And would you believe I went down to the health department to see if I could do it that year, kept, when Bill was doing it. And they said, look, yes, you can do it, but not this year. You're too late now, but you'll be welcome next year. So I worked for the next year with ICI, and the next year went and did physiotherapy. Now, the thing I didn't realise, having spoken to returned servicemen and to Bill Bates, that there were so many women doing physio and very few men. And when I had my interview up at the hospital, I saw all these girls around wearing white, and I just thought they were nurses. I didn't, and I met a Miss Brown, who was one of the charges at the hospital. And she was so professional, I was quite impressed with Miss Brown. She said, yes, you've got good hands, and you've got the background, we, you've, you know, you've done well at college, and we'd like you to do physio, we, we'll, we'll accept you. And when I went down to Dunedin, I was taken into the men's room the day I arrived. And there I met Hugh Powell, who was a male lecturer, and there were seven guys in that room in my year. Was I lucky? Otherwise, I, if there'd been one or two, I don't think I could have stayed. And when I went into the lecture room for the very first day, I was horrified. There were 30-something women. And I thought, what the hell am I doing here? And I thought, I've burned the boats. I can't walk out now. So I had to stay. And I did. And it's the most wonderful thing that happened to me. It was my sheer chance. That guy... The day after, 
that I spoke to him wouldn't have been there. And I would never have heard about Fizzy. I would never have done it. It was a chance. It was a chance conversation on the telephone. That, that, and I was restless and, and not satisfied with what I was doing. And I became a physician.